Hello, I'm Shirley. Um, I'm going to start off the night by uh, doing an introduction to D3JS. I'm like nicely buzzed right now, so hopefully this will go well. <laughs> so D3.js, or Data Driven Documents, is a way for us to manipulate the, docu or manipulate the elements in the document by binding data to them. So the first step is to select the elements. And D3 gives us some nice uh, functions to do so. So select uh, selects the first matching element, and select all uh, selects all of the all of the matching elements. And oh, sorry, there's okay. There we go. And under the hood, it kind of looks like this. So when you do D3.select or D3.select all it returns to you a selection object. And that selection object is actually an array of group objects. And the group objects are arrays of um, the elements that you've selected. So in this case, it's the, t the row elements. It also has um, a uh, um, reference to the parent node, which in most cases is the document element. And it seems a little bit uh, arbitrary right now, but um, bear with me and I'll explain to you why this might be important. So um, I'm going to open up console right now and then hopefully show you what this looks like in the console. So um, you can see that it's the selection object, which is an array of the uh, group object right here. Um, and that actually holds the row element itself. And likewise for when we select all of the row elements. And then we can, and because select and select all returns for you a selection object, you can actually chain the functions onto each other. So if you select all the row, or all the row elements, and then select all of the uh, the column elements that are children of it, this is kind of what it looks like. I have a lot of feedback. Hold on. OK. And you can see, in this case, um, what it looks like is um, a selection object with two group elements and uh, two column elements inside it, with the parent element being the row elements. And then you can start to do some um, operations on it, like telling it that I want all of the rows to be um, to have the color red. And what it's actually doing, and this is where the like kind of the the structure comes in handy. What it's actually doing when you type this out is it's telling the group, hey, make all of your child elements um, with the style color red. And you can do this with uh, a lot of the other things, like uh, you can set attributes, you can set the class name, you can uh, do a for each loop on them, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, um, it's, it's good to note that uh, all of these um, operations are upon the group. So if you go back to, say, the example from prior, um, you are actually applying the operation on both of those groups separately, and they'll traverse or they'll loop through the uh, child elements separately. So the second step is to uh, bind the data. There we go. Okay. So um, in this example, you can select one of the row elements and then bind the array of one, two, three onto it. In this case, what happens is it gives all of the array, or it binds all of that array to that one row, and it actually binds it to the row element itself, so that if you change the, your selection, um, your selection object, the data actually persists. The 
The same thing happens when you select all of the uh, rows and then bind the data to them. But the difference is that um, instead of the array going to one of the rows, you can see that the individual integers is actually uh, getting bound to the individual rows. Um, and then the magical thing that happens is that D3 actually calculates, or calculates for you um, an enter and exit function. And that's, that's actually where a lot of the magic of D3 happens. And you see a lot of tutorials on them. Um, it's the enter, update, exit uh, pattern. So for example, um, let's take the previous uh, three rows, and then this time try to bind um, an array of five integers to them. And that's fine. Just like before, um, the three rows took the first three integers and, and it got bound to them. But what happens to the four and the five? So when you um, call the enter function on uh, the previous selection, it calculates for you that there is a fourth and fifth element that needs to be created but is not are, or are not yet. And these are, so there's a temporary placeholder element created for them. And so when you do the enter function, this is the selection object that gets returned and you can take this and tell it to um, append the row, or the row elements um, to where these two placeholders are. Similarly, for the exit function, it will calculate for you what the extraneous elements, the row elements, are. Um, in this case, it's the last three row elements. And then, oh, this, by enter, I mean exit. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then you can tell the, uh, the last three elements to remove itself from the parent element. So that's actually pretty much all I was going to say. And then I was going to through, or go through an example. So this is um, one of the tree layouts that um, you might be very familiar with on the D3 uh, website as one of the examples. So it's really pretty. The code looks kind of complex. Um, and here's the JSON data. Basically, it's saying that um, each node has a name, and it has children. And, and, and you can see the, uh, yeah. And so if we start at the top of the code, it's saying to declare a tree layout. And then for the paths to uh, declare a um, diagonal function, Create the SVG element within the body element here. And then load in that data. From that data, we can use the tree, tree layout function to calculate the position of each of the nodes or nodes from the data. And then from those nodes to calculate what the links should be of those nodes. And then, and then from here on is just the enter, update, exit pattern. It's telling us to select all of the links that might be on the SVG right now, which is nothing. Give it the data. Calculate the enter function, which is all of the data that we've bound. Append the path and use that data to calculate the uh, D attribute, which will draw the path itself. Same thing happens with the nodes. We select all of the nodes, which are currently non-existent. We tell it what the, nodes da the data for the nodes are. We tell it to calculate the enter function, which calculates all of the, uh, uh, all of the nodes in the data, and then append, append a group and then append a circle to them. And use the data that we get for each of those um, to calculate the x and y positions. And 
And finally, uh, here's some um, resources that I uh, went through to, to create this uh, workshop. Um, so How Selections Work by Mike Bostock is a really, really great resource. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. And the three little circles um, explains the enter exit update or enter update exit pattern really well. And that's actually all of the workshop. <laughs> Um, I made it really short so that you can ask questions because I think I went through some of them really quickly. When you say that there's placeholders, mm -hmm. does that actually get created in the DOM? No, so what happens is if you, for example, take a look at over here, and this is the enter function. Um, it's actually really interesting because what happens is you have the group element, and then here's the placeholder elements. Or, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you can see that it's not existent yet. It just has the data bound to it. And so these are the, um, these are the two elements at the end. And then um, the update has all of the existing elements. So you just, when you call append onto it, um, it inserts the new row elements to where these two uh, placeholders currently are. Uh, two questions. One is, uh, in one of the slides you had datum, where data currently is. Is there a mm -hmm. distinction there? Yeah. Um, so I kind of skipped or skimmed right over that. Um, datum is, um, you only use it when you've selected one element. So datum and select goes together. OK. And then data and select all go together? Um, generally. Um, I'm a little fuzzy on that distinction, so please don't like cite me. <laughs> what about in terms of um, the difference between assigning data to an object and extracting it? Um, assigning data and extracting yeah. data. So when you say like bind the list one, two, three mm -hmm. to you know, your object, is there a different type of syntax used to assign those you know, data? Ah, thank you very much. Um, so what happens when you do this is this uh, binds the data. Um, and then when you want to use it, um, you so the example is, for example, um, right here you can see that uh, there's a function and then there's a D. Um, the D variable is actually the data of that element. The data that's been bound to that element passed to the function and you can use it to, for example, um, this, data, or this data has um, the x and y coordinates. So that's how you can use it to extract it and then, and then um, give, it, give the attributes to the elements. In the first example of data, uh, where you selected only one row, mm -hmm. would we just have used data instead and produce the same result? Uh, or would it be different? So when I say that I'm kind of fuzzy about this, it's because I've run into errors when I've done that. When I just select one element and then um, tell it data, maybe Kai or Ian can give a better explanation to this. I'm a little bit fuzzy on this, and I'm sorry about that. It's, <laughs> um, yeah. I think we're all a little fuzzy on it. But yeah, I think in general, you use datum to yeah. set one, like you want that da the data that you pass to datum to be bound to that one element. Um, yeah, I mean, you can try. Actually, um, this might be a, um, a, one of the explanations. Um, when you uh, use dot datum, it doesn't calculate a join for you. It doesn't calculate the exit and enter. Uh, whereas when you do dot data, it calculates the exit and enter for you. Um, so it might, that might be why you, can you cannot use select data because when you only have one element, I'm, I'm guessing that's where the, yeah. But you said that it doesn't calculate enter and exit. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Does it show in this uh, console? Yeah. If you take a look at, so it's interesting. Oh, I guess I didn't. So I can do that right now for you. And I, just for warning, I could be wrong.
the, oh, sorry. Answer to the earlier question too. So yeah. I think I have an answer to the earlier question, which is um, if you do just a single selection and you try to bind a data with three. <laughs> <laughs> right here, oh, I can't uh, that. <laughs> try to bind three elements with that data. Um, you have an array with three elements, but only the zeroth element has anything. So there's two extra, there's two missing elements that just don't, they're kind of non-existent. Although when I opened this up, I thought I saw the array. Can you pop this open? Yeah. Which one? This one right here. This one? Yeah, so the array gets bound to it. Um, this, so. this selection too is an array size three though, which is a strange part. I don't think this makes a lot of sense. So, so that's, that's <laughs> kind of fuzzy. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I would just use datum with uh, select and data with select all. <laughs> and data when you want to do a lot of transitions. Uh, and one more, one more point is that data does expect an array, so you always need to pass an array to data. Yes, thank you. You can pass anything like an object or whatever to datum if you want to just say, like, you know, make this element have this object or number or string. Don't they just match select and select all? I mean, select all, you're selecting. But that's, that's, I think, what we're converging on is that you should just use data with select. Yeah. Data with select all. Um, and then you can see when you do dot data, the enter and exit get, it gets calculated. Yeah. Whereas when you have select and dot data, it doesn't get calculated. <laughs> Can you put up the code, please? Oh yeah, it's it's. I'll I'll put it up there. Yeah. Just a can I ask a question about yeah. the code sample or mm -hmm. the radio graph? Yeah. So when we have that var node that you yeah, walk through and explain what's going on, then so you assign to this var node mm -hmm. and you node that append circle. So I guess my question is, what's the? How do you think about what node is? Do you think of it as Identifying the entire set of the DOM nodes, or identifying the node in the node part of the data, or do you think of it as a like a, a variable that's iterating over each of the nodes? So the way I think about um, this node, this this var node, right? Var node is equal to SVG select all. Um, so that actually returns to you the um, selection object. So you can think of it as that like. The whole selection with the groups, with the the elements, and then, um, and it's you, yeah. So when you're appending, so that's the interesting thing. When you do anything like appending or inserting or removing, um, the function is actually on the group. So the group holds all of the elements. Um, and um, the group is what tells, uh, the group is the one that's saying um, append another one to this set of elements or remove these specific elements from this group of elements. Um, so that's, that's what's happening under the hood. That's a really good question because also that pattern is called saving your selections and you can do a lot more advanced stuff with that, I think, you know, maybe. So, so just to be quick, the, the, the first line, the var node equals, will <coughs> append any number of Gs based on mapping over each element of n, correct? But the append of circle will just append one circle? So. No? So, here, I get <laughs> So So that append actually is just like, it, it's just like the append that's happening here. So for every, um, sorry, you're behind this column. So for every element in the selection, it's actually going to get applied. Okay. So it is. It is more like it's iterating through okay. every every element. It's the same for the circle. Yeah, same for the circle. Okay. And, and actually, one one thing up here that's kind of tricky with this code snippet is this is using in this first. I think Shirley mentioned it, but I just want to reiterate. This is using a layout, the tree layout. Mm -hmm. And so you actually this var nodes. This one is these. These aren't referring to um, like DOM nodes. These are referring. This is just a array of data, which is every element um, in that tree, but as a flat list rather than the sort of hierarchical list, um, the hierarchical data structure that gets input into this visualization. Um, and same with the links. I, I have. <laughs> Yes, thank you. I don't think we're covering any layouts tonight, so. No, no, I just uh, wanted to give this example as a enter-exit 
update example. So we should, if you, <laughs> it's funny, I've been working with the exact same mm -hmm. talk thing. So if you want to, and I'm also confused, <laughs> if you want to assign a like entering nodes variable. Okay. So could you just go, you so, know, SVG select all dot enter um, and assign that to, how would you assign? So this is exactly, um, it's right now giving you all of the, um, all of the links uh, that you've created in the, um, uh, the SVG because you start out with zero elements, right? Um, so actually, let me try and re uh, understand that question. Um, so I'm saying you have like five nodes mm -hmm. already up there and mm -hmm. you add two more. Mm -hmm. So you're just gonna get two new node enter, you know, in the node yes. enter collection. Mm -hmm. So, but what would the code be mm -hmm. to set a variable to that set, the node enter? The, 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 only the uh, nodes that got entered. Yeah. So it's, it would be exactly this uh, code. This code only gives you back the nodes that have been entered. The select all data enter append. It returns, yeah. So you could chop it out, you wouldn't need the append, right? And then node, would node have? You do need the append, because the enter only gives you the, um, the placeholders for the, uh, the elements that have yet to be created. And then you need to um, call append so that they would get appended to the SVG element. But Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. So you could have like an enter node variable, mm hit -hmm. that line at enter, semicolon, and then reuse the enter node multiple times to append different things. Is that right? Yeah, you can, you can do that. If all you want is the new elements that just got created, then yes. Generally though, you don't append multiple nodes for every element in your enter selection. Um, unless it's a group. Um, the, the well, but, but when it's a group, so, so there is a node being appended here, and you do have, or sorry, here, and then we do have, we now have a selection. It's not, it's not this sort of special enter thing that has the, the pseudo nodes. It's like a real selection with these G elements. And then to append a second element inside that G, that's happening down here with the pen circle. Yeah, and, but you, you can do a lot of things, not just like maybe one thing you're doing is appending and another thing is something more complex. No? Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, another useful thing that's not really being shown here is how to do like an update, a transition to the elements that already exist and removal of the ones that are exiting. So this is all happening really to the enter stuff and in a full transition, the enter stuff wouldn't look too different. It really, what would look different is uh, modifying the nodes that already exist and the ones that are leaving. Oh, I guess one more question. Um, for the you know, reusable charts, I always put link um, after data and before enter, but I'm never quite sure um, when that's necessary and when that's not. Really. For link? Sorry, you mean? Yeah, so like a lot of times I put that bar after got data and um, before got enter, for, especially when you're doing kind of Yeah, so that's saving the selection before the enter, right? So you mean basically var link here, and then you say link dot enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's so that you can do what Kai was saying, like update all the links that aren't entered, and then remove all the ones. So that's yeah, just more using the saving selections thing. Wait, I, I <laughs> so, so it's that data that really has all these all these methods that we're talking about. So that if you if you want to do a full transition, usually you save you would just. Uh, keep three, these three lines of code to be later and save all this, uh, you'd save right after dot data because that has dot enter, dot exit, and if you just try to apply new attributes, it just updates the existing elements. So everything that you need in the transition in terms of selections is sort of in dot data after you selected something and done dot data to it. And dot datum doesn't really give you that, so that's why I don't really use dot datum with select all. Okay, that was the most complicated part of uh, D3 for beginners. Thank you very much, <laughs> Shirley.